All right, everybody, welcome back to Dean's No Ball here for the week eight recap. Of course, gotta gotta get into the Halloween spirit. Just a little, just a little fun for the two of us. Uh, obviously, we got a little more stuff the, the day after the day this comes out. Obviously, once this video's out, uh, Halloween will be just a day in the past. But of course, you know, just gotta get into the spirit. So, Christian, let's just get this video started, so you can guys can actually hear me. I'll just you know take that off. Yeah, so Halloween special, you know, just for the just the fun of it. So obviously, let's get right into it with the with Thursday nighter with the, the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers and the Buffalo Bills. This was a game that came close towards the end with the Bills at least in the, that um, they were going to choke to the Buccaneers, but thankfully the defense of the Bills they did come in clutch in this game. Um, Josh Allen, for the most part in this game, he looked he looked d decently well. Don't get me wrong, um, there were quite some miscues for him as well. The Bucks, Baker Mayfield start off a little bit slow, but towards the end he was kind of picking it up a bit. Um, it was a really fast start for the Bills. Don't get, do not get me wrong, but towards the second half, that's where uh, you know momentum started changing. Baker started getting in his rhythm, and in the final play of the game, which was the Hail Mary, that honestly that could have been the game for the Bucks, but uh, for the potential um, game winner, Godwin was just one foot shy of that ball. It was it was it was crazy to me. I mean, if Godwin just like had a quicker reaction time by like I would say one more second, I feel that um, the Bucks could have uh, walked away with the upset here. But unfortunately, um, that was not the case. So the Bills, they're five day events, the five and three. Um, they still have a lot of competition in the AFC as we see the Bills. They've been struggling a little bit here and there, but Josh Allen he still managed to kind of keep the Bills in the inside here. Seating position wise, they still got a lot to pick up, especially when they got the Chiefs and the Dolphins in the conference. Yeah, of course, um, hope to see if the Bills can actually keep this momentum going. But of course, Christian, let's get into the big game of the week. Just uh, obviously the bragging rights go to you. Just, uh, I mean, uh, what, what can I really say? I mean, I guess let's start with the positives. Moving on, let's get let's get right into the just uh, just a lot of the negatives for my Rams. I mean, uh, to start, um, the O-line struggles are back. But well, what can we really say about that? I mean, um, Stafford was uh, under pressure a lot, which, of course, you know, we, we do have to attribute that to a great Cowboys D-line. Sure. But um, the, the O-line just simply has to do better. I mean, sure, the, there's going to be pressure. But when Stafford doesn't have any, I mean, Stafford just given, you know, absolutely no time throughout the game. Um, ended up translating into that, you know, uh, the injury to, to his finger to, you know, just, you know, it was multiple injuries by, by that point. And, you know, I mean, he ended up, you know, having to leave the game, which finally, at least he did leave the game. You know, there's, you know, the whole little narrative of all oh, he's so tough, but, you know, he's just he's only hurting himself. So thankfully he did uh, leave the game here. Brett Rippon came in, you know, what was he going to do? But uh, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get too into this. You know, it was, it was a re expected result. I just, you know. Had no expectations and they still disappoint. I mean, this is just a phenomenally bad game for the Rams, um, stooping even lower than what happened last time, uh, last week against the Steelers. And uh, I, I'm just, you know, like I said, you know, I'm not just gonna, I'm not gonna get into this. You know, just a, you know, congratulations, just a, uh, just a, a great showing for your Cowboys, and you know, it's, it's back to the drawing board yet again for the Rams. Yeah. So I mean, we talked about it. Expectations seem to be exceeded, but still a lot of miscues. Obviously, you know, still gonna respect you. You're not, you know, not gonna be too cocky about this. But obviously, when looking at this Dallas scene, um, this was on. I know I called a close game, but this was a really huge victory, 23 point victory, uh, for this Dallas team. And Dak Prescott was just in rhythm, um, the whole game. I mean, aside from that pick that kind of miscues his stats, um, that's it. Pass that led to an interception. But I mean, it wasn't really a bad pick per se, but you know, still, still, still kind of leaves the stats a little iffy but before touchdown passes. And coming into this game, the Rams, uh, their passing game, um, they only allowed four touchdowns um, the whole year in the passing game. I know sharing the run, that's really where they struggle with, but the passing, you know, I would know you, they're a little, you know, better at that point. But you know, Dak Prescott got, uh, got four on their head on that, and that kind of just showed a lot. Um, and then Matthew Stafford, that O line just, well, like you said, it just was not helping him whatsoever. The our D line was just getting to him. Micah, Demarcus Lawrence, and obviously also Digazu is an underrated player on this team, finally proving himself the name here. And the cornerbacks too. The, on the defensive side, Deron Bland, oh like my like wow. I mean, three picks, picks, pick sixes already. Excuse me. He's got the same amount of touchdowns as like like uh, I believe a little over ten receivers. Uh, and most of them are number one, so that's a really great sign to see. I mean, Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, those were the two guys I was really worried about about the Dallas team containing a man. 
our corners did the exact stuff on Gilmore, Deron Bland, and Jordan Lewis. They did their job containing the, um, them two, and it was just all around great game by both. And CD Lamb, feeding CD Lamb, that's exactly what we need to do, especially with the big game coming against Philly, which, you know, I'll get into the, um, I'll get into that in the preview. Moving on from that, we're moving on to another game that, you know, lots, lots of things happening here, the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. So obviously, as we talked about before in the, in the last video that was uploaded today, um, Kirk Cousins, his Achilles done for the season. So um, that's really, it's tough, it's tough to see for this, how we went over it. Now, um, Vikings, we would expect them to possibly, you know, get a free agent or make a huge trade by, by tomorrow afternoon, which, you know, it's unlikely to happen, but it's really, it's really doable. I mean, uh, Vikings really, really coming back from huge, huge resurgence after starting off really, really slow this year. And then the injury with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and KJ Osborne. Those two receivers really stepping up for this past game. And um, the run game, it's uh, it's it's okay. Madison started picking it up a bit in this couple of games. I know you had your thing with Madison on fantasy, um, but he's starting to pick it up a little bit more. And Jordan Love, this is the guy I was defending this offseason. And man it's just it's, it's looking bad on me bro it's really looking bad on me but you know at least i'm not alone with you know with you and your justin fields takes so we're kind of you know in the same boat as that but jordan love like he has raw talent don't get me wrong he has potential he's still a young quarterback but it's really just gonna have time to develop i i would have thought he would have gotten his rhythm you know this season but there's a lot of things going on in the green bay especially on the coaching side matt lafleur i would expect them to be on the hot seat right now you know losing um Devontae and rogers really really screwed them over but hopefully the floor he's still a good coach but hopefully he'll be able to bounce back from this but you know this season i don't think they're gonna pretty make make a fire at all especially then as being my division winner yeah, of course uh, it's tough to see how both of those teams are going to fare moving forward, but we'll move it into uh, another pretty surprising game in the Falcons and the Titans, and the story of the game, Will Levis. I mean, the mayonnaise enthusiast himself, just a, what a way to start a career, man. I mean, four touchdowns right right off the bat, just, I mean, just phenomenal. I mean, that that's kind of showing, I mean, you know, um, I know you would agree with me on this, but, you know, I, I kept saying ever since week one, I would expect Will Levis I kept yeah. saying by week 10, week 11, now we, we see even by week eight, he he's on, I mean, sure, he's only starting because of Tannehill's injury, but, and he will be starting Thursday against the Steelers. You know, it shouldn't be just because of the injury. He really should be getting the start. I mean, we see um, he is, he's helping this team far more than, than Tannehill has. And I mean, sure, Tannehill had his run, uh, did a lot for this team, but, you know, he's running his course. And, I mean, Will Levis, I mean, sure, it's one game, but he's showing great signs um, just right there. I mean, getting into again, another sign, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, a lot of people, I mean, sure, the the whole deal was, you know, you're talking about going to a contender. Why are you going to the Titans? He's he slowly get, had a resurgence. He did have uh, that phenomenal game against the Colts a couple weeks ago. Uh, did slow back down a little bit, but now we see here, I mean, three of those four touchdowns from Will Levis go right to him and just, uh, I mean, this could be a, a good duel in the future if if DeAndre can can stay on the on the Titans maybe a little longer. I mean, this could be a formidable um, a formidable duel for, for, for time to come, but I mean, just a surprising win overall. I mean, we've seen the, the Falcons kind of trending upwards a little by little in that mediocre division. I mean, both of these teams in mediocre divisions. And of course, I mean, Desmond Ritter was having a, an off game, ended up getting hurt. And we, we got to see Taylor Heineke, who is someone that we, we've kind of, um, you know, grown to be a fan of, of course, and uh, couldn't fare much better. So, I mean, it's it's tough to see, you know, the Falcons, they, they're one of these bipolar teams, you know, you never know what you're going to get with them. And I mean, they got a, they got a, as, as it looks right now, a fairly, fairly favorable game coming up. So we'll see if that, that can continue, if they can actually build on anything, you know, to, to fix some stuff yeah i mean great game overall but still one game so lots to see from this young rookie so you know obviously moving on from that we are staying on the afc side with the Colts hosting the new orleans saints and this was a this was a really really great game for the for the saints man especially coming off a pretty tragic loss Derek carr he had a, a great game and you know highlight of this as well no turnovers from Derek carr which you know which is a problem you know he was that was a huge problem, but it was there that was pretty much screwing up the Saints for the most part. But Derek Carr, he had a great game, once again, throwing for 300 yards and recording two touchdowns. So really, really, really played a huge part in this. And then obviously stand like, and then, you know, Randy Moss 2.0, you know, just jokes about Rashida Shaheed, man. You know, three of his catches went for 153 yards. Like that's Randy Moss stats. That's that really, um, 
that really came from a surprise. No one really expected that, especially seeing that Chris Olave is the number one threat. But he had a pretty, pretty, pretty rough game. Not really a rough game, but he really wasn't putting up too much. And the Colts, they were just, they were just staying into this game, man. I mean, they had the, they had a one point advantage, the one point lead at halftime. But after that, I was just close. Garden Minshew, he just he really wasn't able to get anything done. Still, you know, still another 200 yard thrown game from him, but it really wasn't enough. The defense was kind of a little off of the Colts as well. Um, the run game for the Saints, it was, you know, it was doing the best with Taysom Hill and Amon Kamara. I mean, Amon Kamara, man, he's, you know, he's going back to his, you know, his uh, great self, how it was, you know, after not after missing the first couple of games, you know, it's starting to look picking up a bit. And, you know, him in the receiving threat as well, it's really pays off for this uh, Saints team. And, you know, they're, they're stuck here at four, uh, four and four. I mean, it is a really bad division for this NFC South. The only advantage, right? Their only um, opponent right now really to for this division, it's really the Buccaneers. And it could be really be neck to neck to them. So the quarterback situation with the Saints, you know, I think Derek Carr, I feel like he'll be able to do it. Um, and then Gardner Minshew, still another quarterback problem for them. Gardner Minshew, he had that, you know, big uh, game winner a couple weeks ago. Um, but I think it's going to be a really huge problem for the Colts if that, you know, they can't get any of that chemistry going. But on the bright side, uh, Jonathan Taylor, he is looking good. He is looking good once again. Same with Zach Moss, that one-two punch. So I think this should be a nice, you know, I guess a bittersweet moment for Colts fans that the run game that Jonathan Taylor is back to his old self. Still a little too early, but you could say that he's starting to pick it up a bit is what I'm trying to say. So run game's looking great. So hopefully that can kind of pick it up for Gardner Minshew. So, you know, but still, this Colts team still has a lot to uh, undercover. To, un to uncover. You know, obviously two teams in very mediocre divisions. Can't take much for them to maybe make a run at it. So we'll move it on, obviously staying in, on the AFC side in another divisional matchup here with the Patriots and the Dolphins. And I mean, the dominance continues for the Dolphins to a, yet again, I believe it's up to seven in a row that he has defeated Bill Belichick. Just, uh, I mean, that, that just shows the turmoil the Patriots have been in. You know, it's, I mean, everyone seems to be uh, running up streaks on them. Um, the, this this Miami offense has just been phenomenal yet again. I mean, sure, let, let me like we say, you know, it's against a, such a struggling team like the Patriots, but I mean, uh, you know, Raheem Mostert even in a slow game, I mean, still uh, did find himself into the end zone. Just, I mean, you know, pr pretty average numbers, but you know, he maintains a, a pretty pretty decent pace himself and not even cracking the the, the top of the receiving numbers in Tyree Kill, just uh, phenomenal himself with. Uh, finally reaching uh, the 1,000 yard mark with only, I believe he's, uh, how they hit their bind? And it was in nine games that they, that he, uh, they took him to get to 1,000, which I believe he is the fourth fastest to reach that. So obviously record breaking numbers for, for the Miami offense. And obviously what I alluded to, Jalen Waddle himself had just a phenomenal game. Just um, all around the Miami offense has been firing on all cylinders and it's a testament on what the, the the Patriots struggles. It's just you know a tale of two teams, and I mean just uh, another big big information for the Patriots that obviously someone that I know you're a big fan of Kendrick Bourne, just uh, another another really really rough injury. He will miss the remainder of the season with that ACL tear. Seem to be having a a good deal of injuries. It was a tough week for injuries this season uh, this this week, and you know obviously we'll keep getting into that as as the recap continues. But you know obviously. And as we say with anyone, you know, prayers to, to Kendrick and hopefully he recovers well to move into 2024. Yeah, tough to see, but all they can do is move on from that. Now moving on to the Battle of the New York teams, the uh, Met, uh, Meltdown at MetLife Stadium. This was just a this was just a game. It was just a horrible game all around. I believe it was 15 punts um, accumulated by both teams combined in the first half. Thank you, thank you. That's why I was just in the first half alone. It was just, it was just a poor performance by both offenses. I mean, this is a like obviously this is a, it's an understatement. This was a defensive battle, but two teams with the court with quarterback situation. Jets kind of have the upper hand on this situation. Zach Wilson, you know, three and zero in the last couple starts, but you know, obviously with the help of that Jets defense, especially without you know Sauce Gardner, which is their quarterback one, which you know everyone expected that team to you know fall apart after that. But you know, it's starting to look the the defense is adjusting to that, and obviously with Tyrod Taylor as well. Um, I believe Tyrod Taylor he did get injured that game as well with. I believe it was ribs. I'm not. I'm not, I forgot which injury it was, but. It, yeah. 
around the area. Yeah, I'm not too entirely sure which injury it was. I don't have the it in my mind right now, but he did get injured this game, man. You know, it was a pretty, pretty you know, pretty blow for the Giants, especially with the quarterback situation that you know they're going through, and then Daniel Jones still with his neck injury. Um, this game really, really in a matter of seconds. Zach Wilson with only 24 seconds left in this game until the end of regulation. Got that bond to field goal range and then grabbed the leg, tied up the game to get this game into overtime. And then game winner for the Jets. This was uh, another pretty, it was an ugly win. Ugly game, ugly win for the Jets team, but they got it done. Could there be a po- another another team with a possible resurgence to make it far in this playoffs? Highly unlikely, but Zach Wilson, if he's able to get in the groove a little bit more and that defense is still able to play a uh, top notch that they did, I feel like they may potentially sneak their way in, but it's really a long shot. Still a lot of mishaps with this team. As for the Giants at this point, just tank. At this point for the Giants, everything's going wrong with this Giants team. You know, I mean, as a Cowboys fan, you love to see it, but um, really what more can you do for this team? Yeah, of course, um, I honestly do have good hope for the Jets. We'll see how that how that goes moving forward. But moving into uh, another another AFC battle right here in the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I, I'll just start it off with the Steelers. Just the, you know, the injury narrative continues. Kenny Pickett had to leave the game. And uh, of course, Mitchell Trubisky finally got some game action in the in this uh, Steelers offense. Been well for him. And just, uh, I mean, he, he did what he could. It was, it was a, a slow game overall, obviously, you know. Uh, George Pickens, someone you know, you were hoping to get going a little more. He, you know, he struggled with a with a struggling offense. I mean, if, even their starter is kind of, you know, it's it's hit or miss to even get it. You know, when, once you get into you know lower in the depth chart, it's gonna it's just gonna be more and more struggles. And on the defensive side, the big blow here, Minka Fitzpatrick is expected to miss some time with the the in, I believe it was a hamstring injury he himself picked up. So, and as for the Jaguars, the the run continues they are at a at the longest uh win streak in the nfl at the moment just i mean trevor lawrence playing phenomenally and obviously his college teammate in travis Etienne, a great game himself with not only on the on the rushing side of the ball but even receiving with that 75 yard bomb and also getting the two-point conversion so just a uh just a great overall game from the Jaguars offense which you know that's kind of been the more mediocre side of them obviously I keep talking about their defense who is you know you know heavily underrated that I'm a really big a big a big fan of the, this defense and they're, they're they seem to just be you know hitting their stride right at the right time we'll see how much noise the Jaguars can make moving forward yeah obviously the Jaguars this is a team that you know stuck to look better but obviously with Trevor Lawrence we're just to see from there anymore updates to come soon now moving on to another NFC East battle. This is another. Uh, I think this is a, this is a, a win for the Eagles, but there's a lot of things to look at for this Eagles team. I mean, to the Commanders, I talked about it before. The Commanders, that there's a possibility that it could be an upset because there's a thing with Commanders ending streaks, and you know, in the beginning of the game, it kind of did look like it. But I'm gonna go back to this narrative for the Eagles. That defense, it's, it's starting to dismantle, and you know, this this really showed against this Commanders team. I mean, they were just. They're just going through this Eagles in the beginning of the game. I mean, Jalen Hurts, he had to put this team on his back. But this defense of the Eagles, it's starting to starting to look like it's dismantled once again. And, you know, they got away with this win here. And thankfully to, you know, A.J. Brown in the in the past game. Uh, A.J. Brown's been having a phenomenal season, breaking records, break, uh, excuse me, records. He just looks great, especially with and then Devonta Smith at the, at the at the second. He's he's they're both of them. They're looking scary for this Eagles team, but it just really all depends on this um this defense and how they're going to you know pick it up. I talked about it before that you know their upcoming their upcoming games. I mean they got it done against the Dolphins. Um they got it done against the Commanders here, but you know the next couple of games, especially against the Cowboys that they're going to we're playing, which I'll get into with the, with the next week's preview as well. So we're gonna show them the true colors of this Eagles team and this for the Commanders Sam Howell. Near, threw nearly 400 yards on this Eagles defense. I mean, Sam Howell, out of all players, like, this this is really something to, to look at for Philly. I mean, the commanders, um, Sam Howell, like, he threw too much. I mean, there was really no run game for him. Everything was on Sam Howell. Um, really couldn't do much. Although, the past game did look good with Jahan Dotson. Starting to look good, uh, even though he was, you know, having, you know, pretty mid-games here and there. And then Jamison Crowder, too, kind of keeping the commanders in the game as well here. But... Um, defense, they couldn't get the job done against the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, high powered offense towards that. Yeah, obviously, like you said, you know, that trap game always seems to be with the commanders. Can't, can't seem to be escaped. But 
we'll move it into a matchup we've been talking about ever since Beansock in the Houston Texans and the Carolina Panthers, a battle of the top two picks. And this one hev- heavily underwhelmed. We got to say, say it that way. It was, a, it was a really sloppy game. Not, not much offense going. I mean, sure, you know, defensive battle. Um, can't can't put it on the offense if the if the defense is playing a solid game which you know as we always say with the Carolina Panthers they they have solid pieces on defense and you know it, it was shown here now uh, not the the highest powered opponent in Houston but someone that has been showing to be a formidable opponent and uh you know credit to Carolina they were able to 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 hold, hold them back uh you know I mean to hold them to 13 points it was looking like that was going to be enough for Houston uh to that point they you know, uh, obviously they it was uh, 12 to 13 going into I believe you know around around two minutes in the fourth. Uh, looked like they were gonna have it uh, locked up, but you know, costly turnover and eventually the game-winning field goal, field goal by uh, Eddie Pinheiro. So, which you know, even that in itself was a really um, interesting sequence in itself. The the special teams kept um, kept creeping in, just I mean, kept committing penalty after penalty to make the field goal even easier for the Panthers. So, um, just a kind of a, a bunch of bonehead moves for the Texans to eventually give this game away. Yeah, it's finally nice to see Bryson finally got his win, but you know, still, still a lot of mishaps and flaws within that Panthers team. Now, now moving on to another great, uh, another great matchup, which was one of our heads heads, the Browns and the Seahawks. I obviously, I uh, luckily got away with this one with the Seahawks coming in clips towards the end. Um, this, I, you know, from the get-go, this was two great defenses uh, going up against each other. We see the Browns defense, you know, we see what they did against the Niners and, you know, you know that ugly game against the Colts, but their defense is really looking, um, looking up to... I guess the hype in a way. I mean, when you got, you know, your cornerback position with Denzel Ward, and then you got that monster in the defensive end position on the Miles Garrett. I mean, when you got two pr- great guys on that team, um, this just brings a lot of momentum for that defense. And, you know, they're forcing turnovers. They're getting to pressure to Gino. Two interceptions they recorded on Gino. And the, 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 the excuse me, Browns defense are really putting it on uh, the pressure on Gino and the Seahawks. But Seahawks, they're able to get away with this with the run game, which was a little iffy with Kenneth Walker. But, um, Tyler Lockett, which you know is a Seahawks, you know Seahawks legend. Tyler Lockett pretty had a pretty good game, you know that touchdown in the beginning, early on in the game, and then my and then my rookie of the year, which is pretty long shot, uh, Jackson Smith Nagua, he sealed the game up with the game winning touchdown for the Browns. I mean PJ Walker, he wasn't able to um, capitalize on that, and then we saw you know Dorian Thompson Robinson from UCLA get a snap, she completed one pass for nine yards, but you know it's nice to see. But PJ Walker. Still couldn't get it done. Still no evaluation on Deshaun Watson yet. Um, this is the decision to make for the Browns, whether they're going to stick with P.J. Walker or are they going to bring back or are they going to start Deshaun Watson once again after the, uh, his injury, which I believe it was his shoulder that he re-injured, if I'm not mistaken. Shoulder, yeah. yeah, so still waiting on evaluation of that. Doesn't know yet if he's going to start or he's going to start the next uh, game when he's healthy, but that's something to look up for the, the Browns. And Seahawks, 5-2, and two, they're one of the top teams in the NFC East. Really, the only thing I see the problem here with the Seahawks is Geno being able to contain the ball. Yeah, so I don't. I'm pretty sure Deshaun Watson's job is pretty safe after uh, this kind of performance from PJ Walker, but we'll wait and see if he can pick it up if Watson still is out. But of course, we'll move it into another divisional battle here with the Chiefs and Broncos, and the streak is finally over with the Broncos finally beating the Chiefs after 16 consecutive losses. Chiefs couldn't get 17. Mahomes' first loss against the Broncos in his career. First win for the Broncos since Peyton Manning was under center. So just a, I mean, an all-around great game. I mean, Russell Wilson, um, you know, yet again, he's, he's been picking it up um, throughout the, the last couple games. I mean, he's he's been playing solid uh, throughout. It's just obviously um, haven't really been able to see a complete game from the Broncos. I mean, last week um, almost got away from them uh, with the with the Packers game but I mean right here defensively they were they were just phenomenal they they um, Mahomes looked like he didn't know what he was doing just uh, completely didn't look like himself um even Travis Kelsey I mean sure he led he led the team in in receiving but only 58 yards kind of kind of a, a mediocre game for his standards I mean hey no Taylor Swift in the stands no 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 success for the Chiefs kind of kind of seems like that narrative is living true so um, could this be a sign for things to come to the Broncos? I mean, 
you never know. Russ really does look to to be playing at a at a good uh, consistency uh, as of the last couple games. If if this offense, I mean, even Jerry Judy, someone who we've obviously been been shitting on a, a good amount, he he kind of he, he had a a pretty good game here. So if the if this offense uh, continues to click in this way and the the defense continues to hold it down, you never know. Maybe maybe this Broncos team can make a run moving forward. Yeah, just a surprising loss from the Chiefs here, but it's the Chiefs. They'll be able to back, bounce, bounce, back, bounce back from this. Uh, now moving on to another matchup that was closer than I really expected, the Baltimore Ravens and the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, looking at Lamar Jackson, he had a, he had a pretty subpar game, to say the least. I mean, he really wasn't putting up a lot of production here. Um, oh, the O-line, it was giving up a lot. It gave up a couple sacks. It gave up four, four sacks um, in this whole game. So it was really kind of like Lamar Jackson was pretty much running – for his life most of the time, I guess you can say. But um, the defense was, you know, holding its ground for the most part in the first half. It really came towards more to the second half where the Cardinals started putting up a little bit more fight. And that I've been talking about this, you know, this this um this whole season so far that the Cardinals, no matter, they're, don't get me wrong, they're a bad team. Yeah, they beat us, but objectively, they're, they're a pretty bad team. But they're still able to put up a fight. And that's exactly what they've been doing these all these games they had. Um, they, they they're able to put up a fight. They've been able to keep close games, and that, that says a lot for this for this Cardinals team. And um, Joshua Dobbs, uh, he, you know, just another Josh Dobbs thing. Couldn't really get anything there. Um, and he is benched um, for the next game, so he will not be getting the start until either uh, I think his third string quarterback is starting. I don't recall his name until. Yep, there you go. And then obviously until Kyler Murray is finally eligible to actually make a start. So they just got to wait on there. Um, Cardinals, they they had a chance at the end of recovering that onside kick, but re- really, really couldn't do much. I mean, defense, uh, defensively, they're all worn out. Gus Edwards just just ran through them. Generational game by Gus Edwards. Gus, Gus the bus. He just he just came out of nowhere, man. 80 yards, three touchdowns. But, you know, this is, this is really good. Kind of um, the run game was kind of putting less pressure on Lamar, which is great, which is great. Um, but for the Ravens' sake, still top of, they're one of the top teams in the AFC right now. Yeah, so keep it in that division. Obviously, here in my highlight game, I think we're both pretty happy to to drop this one in our predictions. I don't think we got any problem losing this one out. The pretty narrative continues. I mean, what can we say? I think it's, it's looking more and more like maybe he was a product of the system i i don't want to say it too early i mean I, we keep saying it these in these uh, you know three big losses i mean it really does look like he he was a product of the system pretty just looked absolutely flustered he um had a I mean, let's just say you know he had a terrible game against uh i mean not not even the uh, a full strength uh bengal's defense obviously uh they were they were missing hutchinson or uh, I, I forget. I know. I know Hutchinson's on the lines, but um, uh, one one of their their top defensive uh, players. I, I forget who for for the Bengals, but was um, um, there we go. Uh, Hubbard did did come out of the game with an injury um, around the third quarter, and um, Brock Purdy was still heavily struggling. I mean, sure, I guess you know they were able to kind of stay in this game, sure, but um, the losses of. Um, I mean, the, the loss of Debo, even though he kind of hasn't been his his top target this season, that is really hurting him. I'm sure Ayuk's still there, but it's it really hasn't been enough to you know having 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 enough you know consistency on both on both sides to actually have someone to throw to. It's it, it's been hurting pretty, and you know for the for the Bengals, I mean this resurgence continues with just a uh, I mean phenomenal uh, Joe Burrow just uh just keeps I mean sure. Obviously, MVP conversations far out of the question because it's such a such a slow start. But I guess I'm gonna have to eat my words here when when I said I didn't think the Bengals were gonna be able to to come back from this you know really poor start. Just a I mean they they know how to do it. They they got to start the season 0 and 2 and they know exactly how to how to bounce back from it. You know, props to them. They I mean it, it all comes down to yeah it, it was about the injuries that you know obviously bro had had that ankle thing and you know they they weren't at full strength and now that you know he's finally uh up to full health and the rest of the team is is back up where they want to be the Bengals are looking like themselves so now obviously they're back into that contending form and who knows maybe they will finally uh prove my my point right and maybe make that run at the super bowl yet again 
Yeah, so just a lot of decisions uh, need, need to be made here for this uh, San Francisco 49ers and see where they're going to go from there. Now, obviously, closing out closing out the Sunday slate with the Sunday Nighter, the Chicago Bears and the Chargers. Not really much to say here. I mean, this is kind of expected. Tyson Bagnet, I mean, he had that one game against the Raiders uh, last week, but uh, this was actually a Chargers team that, you know, is competent. You know, their defense is actually, you know, pretty okay. And this is show here. I mean, it's had like two interceptions. I that. Kill the Bears, man. I mean, Justin Fields, he is he is their French, uh, the Bears franchise course, man, without a doubt. But, you know, Tyson Bagney just really just, I wouldn't say overhyped, but I really didn't expect them to, you know, take this Bears team anywhere. I mean, the, from both sides of the ball, offense and defensively, the Bears just really couldn't get anything done against this Chargers team. Really highlighted this game was really off the Eckler. Sure, he did poor um, rushing wise, but receipt on the receiving side, he he really stepped it up. I mean, he was the leading receiver for this Chargers team, um, recording almost 100 yards and a, and a touchdown as well. So obviously, Austin Eckler, rushing wise, you know, he still needs to pick it up a bit after that injury. Uh, he got um, not that long ago, so he's still kind of trying to get adjusted here. But you know, passing wise, he really played big, played a big part. And then Justin Herbert, you know, uh, he looked he looked good for the most part. I mean, three touchdowns, no interceptions as well, which is great to see. I mean, we see the inconsistency that Justin Herbert is. I mean, everyone, you know, the memes going around. He has no clutch gene. Obviously, that, that really did not need to play a part in this game as well. Since, you know, they're pretty much have the advantage for the most part of the game. And the defense of the Chargers, it looked, you know, it looked, it looked pretty competent. competent. It looked pretty well for the most part. And then Keenan Allen, you know, just, you know, same dude that he always is doing well for the Chargers. Um, but, you know, Chargers still, they still have a lot to, you know, and go over and see if uh, Justin Herbert um, can stay consistent and actually, you know, play well in the remaining games that he has, especially against these top teams that he has remaining in the schedule. Yeah, I mean, just a, I mean, just a phenomenal game for, for Herbert. See see if he can actually, you know, prove you wrong and actually lead the Chargers to the playoffs. So, um, we'll wait and see. Of course, moving into the Monday Nighter, close off our week eight recap here with a game that sure ended up exactly how we probably would have expected, but um, you know, for a while it wasn't looking that way. With you know, I mean, I only, I only got to pick up the second half that right when I turned it on. Uh, a little closer than I would expect at 16 to seven, and right off the bat with a, a pick six from Marcus Peters to uh, make this a two point game. And of course, you know, it was all in jokes, but what did I say? You know, should the Rams go out and pick up, uh, say, Marcus Peters? Just, uh, I don't know what happens to, to have, you know, a, a, a quite a game for himself. But, I mean, yeah, joke aside from that, I mean, uh, after that pick six, absolutely nothing for the Raiders. Just, um, you know, back to their disappointing ways and back to, back for a, a, a great game for, 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 the, for the Lions. And, uh, of course, Jared Goff um, was able to... You know, pick himself up after you know obviously their last game being you know uh, one of his worst games um, ever since he's gone back on this resurgence and I um, mean sure he, he did have that pick but you know tossed that aside um, you know got a touchdown and uh, nearly 300 yards Jameer Gibbs finally uh, really getting involved and obviously we know he finally did get a little bit of production against the Ravens and here he really I mean up to back in the end zone over 150 yards um this is something that you know if as i alluded to in that in that last game if uh the, the lions can get him involved it's, it's gonna be you know phenomenal for this offense and i mean as for the raiders i mean what can you really say here uh, it, i gotta say it's all summed up with uh Devontae adams and uh for starters that uh, horrible overthrow by garoppolo in the fourth quarter on that last drive and obviously Devontae looking absolutely uh pissed off at uh just the the way things are going right now um yeah he only has himself to blame for forcing him his way into into you know the pitiful franchise of the vegas raiders but i mean we'll see we'll we'll, we'll see what i mean if anything i mean they already said they're not going to trade him um it's it's all just seeing you know what they can do next year because clearly this year there is nothing going but of course that's going to wrap up our recap a lot of a lot of surprising games to talk about this week and we'll move it into our predictions and our how they went which of course christian you did get get a nice little upper hand on both of our disagreements which i mean both games i mean sure i'll i'm i hold my 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 concerns for for the pj walker performance at the end of the game if it wasn't for that i'd still have my lead but i mean 
I'll give you your credit here for for this week, which you know, obviously we're back uh, even at nine and nine, even overall, and you know obviously you you um, up to on me. So obviously we'll move it into our week nine preview. Christian, I'll let you get us started with your Cowboys game. Yeah, so just kick it right off, and I'm actually gonna keep this one brief. Um, this is a America's game of the week. This is two two top teams in the NFC and the two top teams in this division. This is the game that's gonna prove for both teams. This is gonna prove for the Cowboys that are the Cowboys able to contend against these top teams? Are they and this is really gonna prove is if, if we do make the um, playoffs, are we able to move forward, let alone to the AFC conference, excuse me, NFC championship game, which is you know the bare minimum that we have, and it's gonna to prove to Philly. Um, can they beat these contending teams, which like, a team like the Cowboys? They're um, they've you know they've been struggling defensively. They've been struggling keeping close games, keeping close games. Especially like looking at three teams they played: Patriots, Jets, and Rams. Cowboys blew those teams out of the water. Philly kept that close within. So that's really a lot to say from um, the, this two teams. But you know, looking at my Cowboys, this is a very winnable game if Dak Prescott can stay in rhythm, stay consistent. If the O-line can block, feeding CeeDee Lamb as well, um, open up the pass game for Brandon Cooks and Michael Gallup. If Tony Pollard still struggling in the run game for that one spot, um, he's not really able to put up the work, which is, you know, why he was able to succeed at this running back too with Zeke. But um, if Tony can pick it up, and if this defense can really get to Jen Hurts and, you know, force him to make these turnovers, this is a very pretty winnable game for my Cowboys team. And to be on top of our, hopefully in the division in the next couple of weeks, if we keep, you know, this consistent play. But... Regardless of all that, it's going to be a really great game by both these teams. And we're finally getting the battle of Dak and Jalen. Now, moving on to my game of the week. Uh, I mean, excuse me, not my game of the week. My highlight game of the week. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. This is going to, not to get it's going to be another great game. I mean, the, resurg- the resurgent Bengals coming back up after the slow start. And the Bills, who are, you know, it's a roller coaster for them this season. It's not really looking very consistent for the most part. They're 5-3. and three. Um, Cincinnati Bengals are 4-3. and three, So... There's going to be another game to prove both teams. Um, same thing with uh, the Bills. Is are they, This game is going to prove, are they going to be able to contend against these top teams in this really tough AFC conference? Cincinnati Bengals, are they be able, going to be able to keep in track to, you know, possibly run away with the AFC North, which, you know, it's not looking the best for them in those terms? Or can they potentially make their way, sneak into the playoff spot? This is really going to determine it for both teams. I mean, Josh Allen. Um, his connection with Stefan Diggs so far this season, it's 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 been great for the most part. That's really gonna be the big thing here. And for the Bengals, Jamar Chase, 7-Eleven, always open. This is gonna be another big thing. If Jamar Chase is able to cook those uh corners of the Bills, it's gonna be a long game for the it's gonna be a long game for this Bills defense, but let alone two star receivers on each team. Um excuse me, one star receiver on each team, excuse me. But this is gonna be a really, really nice game. Good game. I really expect nice offensive battle from both these quarterbacks. Yeah, obviously a great game to talk about. Obviously, can can go without saying the the Demar Hamlin situation gonna gonna be a gonna be a really de- definitely waiting for a really nice tribute to him returning where where the the this incident did happen. So of course I'll move it into my Rams game this week, and I'm hoping it's not uh, another issue like it was with the Steelers game. I don't want to overlook a, a team like the Packers. It was I mean it's I mean it's Jordan Love what. What, what what can I say here? I mean, he's he shows flashes. He 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 really does. I mean, I I do like him as a, as a quarterback. I like him like what as what I've always said. I I do think he's just a year away from really breaking out. But you know, he hasn't shown it this year. And is is this going to be the game? Which you know, it always seems to happen that you know teams find just you know happen to find find it that something that they haven't had throughout the season against the Rams. You know. But of course, all I can hope is that Jordan Love doesn't, you know, just randomly find it here. Obviously, you know, if if this is just just a game where he he decides to, you know, go generational, Christian Watson maybe has has a great game. I mean, I I really don't even want to think. I mean, overall, I really do expect the Rams to pull this out. I mean, there's obviously some a lot of changes that you know, I don't really expect them to make the changes, which is what really worries me. Um, I really need Darian Kendrick to be taken out of that uh, cornerback one role. I mean, he he has proven time and time again that he is not ready. I mean, sure, does he have the potential and does he have that talent? Of course. I at the end of the day, you know, I talk a lot of shit about him recently, but he definitely has potential. He's just not there yet. I I need to see a lot more from him, and he needs to get um, you know pushed down. I would love to see Trey Tomlinson or, or uh, Kill Witherspoon get um, you know 
you know get get the number one receiver. It, it, I mean, which I you know in this case it will be uh, see who gets on Watson, and um, I'm, I'm expecting. I would love to see some changes there. I would um, overall at the cornerback position, and obviously in the O line, it, it's it's just put push and go. You know, are they going to have a good game? Are they going to have one of the worst games um, an O line can possibly have? It's it also just comes down to that, which you know the injuries are obviously hurting us. So it, it's just to wait and see. I mean, you know, again, the the Packers uh, defense isn't, you know, the the biggest thing here. But um, we'll just wait and see if they actually, you know, do decide to wake it up here. But regardless, I am going to take the Rams. Um, I, I mean, they're in the end, the stronger team. It just depends on, you know, if they make the mistakes that they are obviously, you know, always end up tending to make. But of course, I'll move it into my highlight game this week. Obviously, one of the most anticipated games, two of the heaviest powered offenses here in Germany. Uh, once again, the NFL makes its return to, to obviously to Germany here with the Chiefs and the Dolphins. To attack Valoa and Patrick Mahomes. I mean, obviously, Mahomes coming off a really tough loss here. I'm expecting him to, to go back to back losses, something that obviously the Chiefs aren't really used to could come back to bite both of us i know you you're picking that p- p- picking the dolphins as well you know is mahomes just you know gonna gonna be playing angry and just have a you know just go off himself we'll just have to wait and see but uh i really just think the the dolphins offense is just too powerful for the for for, for the the chiefs defense which you know we see the chiefs defense really you know th- this past week it, they they showed a lot of their struggles and you know, and that's just against the Broncos. If we see against a team that puts 70 on, on the team that just beat them, it, it it shows a lot of what, you know, what could be to come. So it's, it's um, I mean, it, it all depends what Andy Reid can do. Because we, I mean, you and me know Andy Reid is one of the, the best coaches at innovating something. I would love to see Sean McVay do more. But, I mean, I'm, I'm expecting a great game overall. I mean, sure, I do expect the Chiefs defense to struggle, but I also honestly think the the Chiefs offense is going to get a lot of the better of the of the uh, Dolphins defense. Which, sure, Jalen Ramsey, he's back. He had a phenomenal game this past week himself. But I I, I think it's going to be an offensive shootout, and uh, the people in Germany are just definitely going to have a wonderful treat for their first NFL game this year. But of course, that is going to wrap us up here. Obviously, in the Halloween spirit, and of course for you know, obviously being the the Mexican aspect of the Dia de los Muertos on the day that we are, uh, that this video will be coming out. Um, we definitely hope everyone had a wonderful Halloween and hopefully everyone stayed safe. And we will uh, be coming out tomorrow, the day after this video comes out. Of course, we'll get our third episode of Bean Talk. Hopefully, we finally really get to talk about um all the trades and any more storylines coming out as the as of course yesterday the trade deadline did just pass so we'll have a lot of news there hopefully everyone can stick around to watch that thank you for watching and we'll see you guys real soon